good to see each and every one here in the Lord's house. Uh, our choir and uh, we were able to sing this song, The Storm Till the Storm Passes By, with all the, the hurricane there in Florida and, and the Carolinas and other places. Uh, we just wanted just to be reminded uh, that he's Lord of all. And we want to pray, and I, I, I think of no better way than opening up this service and just uh, uh, lifting those families that have been impacted, and I, I think our death tolls are, uh, I believe, what, close to 100 or maybe more. Is any, did anybody hear this morning? I did not hear, but uh, I know it was in the 70s, and someone at one station, I think, was reporting. was a lot of people, and still yet to be determined, I'm sure. But could we just, just for a moment, before we begin our worship time, could we just bow for a minute, if we may? Just, if you would, just bow your heads, and would you at this time just remember all those that have been in the path of Ian this storm? Uh, not only in Florida, but uh, Puerto Rico and Cuba and some of the other nations. Will you just say a prayer for everyone that has been in their path and for those families that I know that there are some that still are trying to get in touch with their families. They're wondering, are they okay? Lord, will you just attend to that, to every family, to every home? I know properties have been destroyed, uh, vehicles, houses, all kinds of recreational vehicles. But also, Father, I know that lives have just been torn asunder. And Lord, we lift everyone up. We've got, I know that North Carolina Baptists, we're on the ground already with feeding units in various locations and other organizations as well as other denominations they're they're there ministering doing what they can lord will you touch and bless their efforts if there are those that are still trapped or maybe they still yet to be rescued i pray that this will be the hour and time in which that our Rescue workers and emergency workers will be able to get to them. And uh, Lord, just help this nation, the other countries, uh, the other territories of our nation, as they now have begun the process of rebuilding and getting things, figuring things out of what's next. So Lord, just hear our prayers this day. We stand as one congregation, but we stand along with our sister congregations as special prayer. has been asked for in all of our churches across our Southern Baptist Convention, but I know across our nation that uh, we're praying uh, for everyone that has been in the path of this storm. So Lord, hear our prayers this day. Uh, take care of each one. And Lord, we'll be so thankful and give them your strength, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glad to see each of you here in the Lord's house today. Let me say welcome. We're glad you're here. Let me call your attention to several announcements we've got very quickly. Pink Sunday coming up next Sunday morning, so be sure to wear your pink if you have it uh, there. Thanks so much for already the blankets that have been given. We've got a number of blankets already put there. Also the food that is there helping uh, there, I know we had several cases of green beans, corn, and things like that. Thank you so much, and please notice the thing. I uh, note the things that each week, if you'd like to bring them, or you want to bring them on one week, that's fine. Whatever works for you and your family. Parent-child uh, dedication coming up on the twenty-third. Grief share continues. I think we had a new person that was here this past week uh, on Monday, six to eight. Uh, please note the youth events that are coming up. Our youth, I think our youth packed 32 boxes, I think, uh, our youth and children, uh, Wednesday night. We're grateful for that. I think if, uh, I know some were added, but uh, as Sunday school was ending, I, I gave a quick count, I think 79 boxes. Some of you may still need boxes. There are some empty ones in the vestibule, still have some other additional ones in the Welcome Center. Let, let us know bring them anytime we will get them to facilities for you so uh, 
Uh, so, but thank you to everybody that has brought them. We're gonna have, we'll have a dedication time here in just a few moments uh, here. Uh, bells continue. If your child would like to play bells, we'd love to have them to be a part. Got several events that are coming up this week, this Thursday night, Rocky River Springs. Get your name on the list if you know you're going to be able to come. If you find out you can come at the last minute, come on. We'd love to have you come and be a part of that uh, time of fellowship there at Rocky River Springs. Uh, the bus will be leaving. Get your name on the list. We'll be sure that that uh, uh, the bus uh, waits on you or calls you or whatever to be sure you're there if uh, if you've got your name on the list. So be sure there. They'll have plenty of food for us regardless there. Get, a, get your name on the if you'd like to go and to serve, uh, probably be late November, early December uh, for going to the center, going through the shoe boxes, getting them ready uh, to be delivered there uh, to boys and girls all over the world. Donna Pittman Toy Store Volunteers, uh, please get your name on the list. Several have already done so. Uh, the Heritage Day, two weeks from today, uh, hopefully the weather's going to cooperate before we can be outside. We will have a work day on that Saturday the 15th. Not in the bulletin, but please note that. A week from tomorrow, we'll be going to uh, the Hendersonville, Asheville area. Get your name on that list if you would. We'd appreciate that. Trunk or Treat if, uh, is coming up on the Wednesday night, October the 26th. We'll get some additional information to you as we get a little closer to that. WMU uh, and Baptist Women, you'll be meeting on October the 20th six o'clock there in the fellowship hall in the sunday school classes was a pink flyer this is from marshall church of god uh ladies for a ladies conference coming up i think it's this weekend if you didn't get one there's some back in the vestibule please pick that up if you would they are also there is there any other announcement needs to be brought to our attention let's t let's go to the lord in prayer if we may and then we're going to have a dedication time on the box this year also here if we may if you've got an unspoken prayer need, slip up your hand if you would. I see almost every hand. This week, please pray for every hand that's been outstretched toward heaven. I know that God saw every need. Let's go to the Lord in prayer if we may. Heavenly Father, this has been such a difficult week uh, in, our, in our nation, but also in our world with all the events and things that continue to happen. Lord, as we've already lifted those up here this morning corporately as a body of believers, those in the path of uh, the hurricane that has touched the lives of so many. Uh, Lord, hear our prayers. Hear these names that are their families and loved ones that are listed on our prayer list. Lord, will you touch them and bring about healing, restoration of their bodies, those that are having surgeries, those that are still uh, under physician's care, that those that are continuing to have testing, uh, others will be having surgery this week and later on this month. There are those that are, that are home that are still needing, Father, your healing power to be laid upon them. These that, are, that would love to be here were here for so many years with us and now in assisted living or in uh, nursing facilities. Lord, will you touch them? May they know that we love them and care for them. And Father, we ask your blessings. For the blankets that are being collected, Lord, may they provide warmth to those that are cold this winter. For, those, for the food collections that are going on, and the food that is being distributed, Lord, I pray in every case, Lord, will you just touch in a very special way and lead, Father, and guide and direct not only our lives but the lives of each person that, we, that we're praying for. Lord, this day, thank you, Lord, for every person that's gathered here that for the Sunday school hour and the time that we have together here in worship. Lord, hear our, hear our hearts. And if there are decisions that we need to make or rededications or commitments, Lord, let this be the hour and the time. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Baxter, if you would, let's play a, little, a video, a short video if we may.
Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, The work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Isn't it amazing that through a gift box, God has raised up intercessors and preachers? I believe the Lord is reminding us today that even in the midst of this pandemic, we are to look upon the nations, to observe, to be astonished, to wonder, because He is doing something mighty. This calling to serve Jesus in this way uh, is the rallying call. That's the sound of the trumpet, the urgency of this gospel that we get to serve, the urgency that He's calling us to introduce more and more people, more and more children, to a, a loving God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Each of you and all of the many volunteers that you represent are the heart and soul and engine driving Operation Christmas Child. During this pandemic, the Lord has continued to encourage and to equip the local church and the body of Christ. The idea that we could have collected more than nine million shoebox gifts around the world in the middle of a pandemic, I believe is miraculous. Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child volunteers are rallying around the opportunity to share the gospel. We're rallying toward National Collection Week, where we seek to send another set of nearly 10 million gospel opportunities around the world. We still have time, we still have opportunity. The Lord has not returned yet. We want to keep pushing and going forward and doing whatever we can do to reach more, share with more, equip more to share more. When the mountain seems too big, the challenge seems way too big, the goal is way too big. God will go before us and fight our battles. Now is the time. And Jesus said the fields are not white in four months, they're white today. And we wanna, we wanna be faithful to that. And that's the opportunity the Lord has given Samaritan's Purse and, and the Operation Christmas Child Project. I hope you saw all the happy faces, uh, the joy that a simple shoebox can bring to a boy or girl. This one happens to be for a girl, ages two to four. Boy, it's heavy, a lot of good stuff. We're not sure exactly where this person may find out if they chose to track it. I know that, uh, I know at least 30, 35 are being tracked that's been given uh, here. Hopefully we'll get a letter back. Occasionally you do. But this is a privilege and an opportunity that we have of sharing Jesus Christ. The good news, great joy to families, not just boys and girls. You know here in America that if we do something uh, for our children, hey, it speaks louder than a bunch of messages that, hey, they love my children. We love the boys and girls in our church. We care about the families that make up this body of believers. But also, God loves each of us, but he loves every boy and girl that's going to be a recipient, not only of these 80 or so boxes or 100 boxes that we'll, we'll have a total of, uh, probably being from our church, but the 10 million plus that boxes that are going to be prepared for boys and girls all across the world. And when every person, when that child receives a box, they will be put into a class. Now you say, you ask the question, what kind of class are they going to be put into? They're going to be taught the plan of salvation. They're going to be invited to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And they're going to be able to take that booklet home with them and they're going to be able to share that not only in some of the nations where these are uh, boxes are going to be distributed 
there may be two or three generations living in that very in a close proximity of one another. So you, you see where if we can plant a seed through a box, look at the far-reaching effects that you're going to see. And if you're joining us online uh, today, and, and you're in our area, if you want to, sh to, uh, uh, to fix a shoebox, if you'll get it here to our office or let us know how we can help, we'll, we'll be sure it gets to the right place. Because I want to touch as many boys and girls and as many families and as many generations as we possibly can that somebody who probably will never meet them until we may get that, we'll, uh, that opportunity, I pray we will in heaven. But we've got an opportunity to tell them that God loves them. That Jesus Christ loves them. Thank you, church, for preparing these boxes. We'll get them on their way tomorrow. And uh, uh, it, it is such a privilege that we have that. So let's take this opportunity, if we may, of simply just bowing our heads for just a moment, if you would. I want to ask you today, this morning, just to pray for every child that's going to open one of these boxes. That they're going to not just receive the t-shirts or, uh, or the markers or school supplies that are in them, but that they're going to be receptive as the gospel is being presented to them. that they're going to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, help us to realize that this is more than just a mere shoebox. This is a door and an opportunity that is being opened that otherwise we would not have to share Jesus. This is missions in the truest sense. And Lord, I pray for every child and every family that's going to be recipient, recipient of these boxes. I pray for those that are going to be uh, getting, these bo getting boxes to the centers, distribution centers. I pray for those that are going to be loading them on planes or boats or camels or, or wagons because we know these boxes are going to, uh, they're going to be taking a lot of different, quite a trip in a lot of ways to some, some remote areas. And Lord, I pray, I know that you love every boy and girl and family just as much as you love each of us. You love them the very same. Lord, for that, I say thank you. So, Lord, we dedicate these boxes in the name of Jesus, your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior. That, Father, that the Holy Spirit may use these boxes to reach men and women and generations of family in the name of Christ. So, Lord, thank you for the love that has been extended into their lives whom we have not met do not know where they're going, but yet, Father, may your blessings be provided through this box and through these boxes to reach people for Christ and that they may find Jesus as their Lord and Savior and find forgiveness of his or her sins. So, Lord, thank you for this church, for all the other churches and organizations that are going to uh, be sending boxes to boys and girls all over the world. Lord, bless. And may Jesus be exalted and lifted up. For we ask it in Jesus' name.
continue to worship by singing hymn number three, Worthy of Worship. <laughs> If we could have our boys and girls come up, Mr. Brandon has a special message for you. Parents, if you need to come with them, feel free to do so. I think that's it. Wow, good morning, everyone. How are we? Good. What do we do as a church family if we know someone that is sick or not feeling well? What is our duty as a church family to help sick people pray pray for sure what else do we do to someone if we know that they're not feeling well or they're under the doctor's care let me ask you this does anyone know which organ this is so this is like a skeleton does anyone liver nice nice for those who didn't study anatomy very much we so we have, in our church family, we have someone with some liver issues, okay? He's going to need some things done to his liver. So we're not being preferential, but we're going to reach out, and we're going to make a card. We're going to have our first outreach exercise. So we're going to make a personal card for Mr. Bill Fowler. He is going to need some, some things done that needs some severe prayer, and we're going to support him as a church family, okay? So what we're going to do is, nice and politely, I brought some markers. We're going to just write maybe your name or stickers. And I just want you to politely put something here, not in here, because this is going to be our picture. We're going to send him a picture. So do not go in the box and be polite. We're going to write our names. You can write a heart. You can do anything you want to do to be a personal card for Mr. Bill, okay? Can we do that? Nice and polite. Once you get done, sit back down for a picture, okay? Excuse me, church. And while they're doing that, 
let me let me just say, cards mean so much, uh, particularly those that are in that are in assisted living or nursing facilities. They appreciate it so very much. I hear that hear about the cards that you send all the time. So I never underestimate what a card can do and how much it helps a family. It really does. When you get done, sit down, okay? Isaiah 41 says, Isaiah 41 says, Isaiah 41 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Okay, go sit back down real quick. We're going to take a picture. Excuse me, church, but we want to reach out. This is an exercise that we all can do to make our church family better. I'll do a little work to it, okay? <laughs> I love the independence. Thank you, Noah. Got it? Okay, thank you. Sit back down and perfect. <laughs> Job well done. Thank you. So for the church, we have our card that we made. Fowler Strong 2022. Green is the color that we recognize for liver issues and so forth. So we really put a lot into this. If we can get centered, let's see here. Someone want to hold this for me? Get kind of centered. We're going to send this picture, and I'm going to hand deliver it to Mr. Bill, okay? Can you get in there a little bit, Eli, please? Thank you, church. Say smile. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> thank you. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the beautiful energy that these children provide, Lord. Thank you that we can take time out of our day to reach out to our church family, Lord. May each and every person that's under, under physician's care or in need of you right now feel comfort and peace from us as a church family. Let us do our daily duty to exalt you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Their enthusiasm is awesome. Let's stand as we continue to worship by singing, Jesus is coming again.
Just and wandering in a world of sin. Why would God ever take me in? A cry rang out from Calvary's blood stain. This time, Children's Church is being dismissed if you'd like to use that ministry program. cease to amaze me of how God works things out till he comes what the title of the message and I wanted to finish up a little bit here on 1st Timothy the fourth chapter then we're going to skip over to Romans the 12th and if we and I'm sure we're not going to finish but we're going to start we'll get started in Romans the 12th chapter also here but I want you to look and I'm going to read out of King James here most of you I'm, I probably have that translation that's okay whatever translation you have is fine Till Jesus comes, what are we going to do? Child of God, do not fear. Beautiful. How theologically sound is that advice to every one of us? Don't be afraid. <clears throat> this week, it was so hard for so many families. Now, I know authorities told so many to leave, but uh, Cindy and I were asking ourselves, if we were there, what would we do? How hard it must be to, to leave what, the place that you call home. And how hard it must be that for a number of folks that maybe here today are just getting back into where 
they're able to see and what little may be left and it may be nothing more than a concrete slab. Think about it. It's hard and it's so difficult. When you and I see and I think we can try to identify but until we're placed in that position it's pretty hard. My heart goes out those that are online, and I know, I know we've got some people in, in and around in Florida and, and the Gulf Coast that's listening, that uh, come in. Our heart goes out to, to you and to your families and friends that um, maybe have gone on to heaven. Uh, may God bless you. May God give you his strength. Look with me here at 1 Timothy in the fourth chapter. I'm going to back up to verse 11 very quickly and then we'll move on to Romans, the 12th chapter. These things, as Paul's writing, he says, these things command and teach. Paul had told young Timothy and gave him an awesome responsibility in which that Timothy really had, he had a struggle being early on in the ministry of really grasping exactly what Paul was saying to him and Barnabas and Silas, some of the others. He had a hard time. But the exhortation was to teach these things. And he said, this is not an option. This is what is going to be beneficial to every person that you're going to come in contact with here in the early church. Wherever they go, that you need to teach them the word of the, the word of Christ. That's what I, I love about these shoe boxes, and I've been an avid supporter all these years of shoe boxes. We've helped several organizations, and uh, in fact, I'm not sure if I, if uh, the the local high school in our area uh, there was one club that we provided boxes number of years, and I'm sure they're still doing that. The Word of God is being taught to every boy and girl. They're given a written version that is taken home with them so that parents or children can read to them if the parents cannot read or grandparents. And those things are very precious to every boy and girl, particularly when they don't have like we have. If I wanted a, a Bible or a different translation, I simply need to go to my shelf in my office at home or come here in the office here. I have numerous copies. Uh, that's just simply not the case. So, Paul's writing Timothy saying, I want you to teach these things. And, and listen to verse 12. <clears throat> Don't let any... Any, uh, let no man despise thy youth. But Timothy, I want you to be an example to all believers in word and in conversation. Those are valid words for 2022 today. May each of us, may we be good examples of what Jesus Christ's words say. Not perfect. None of us are perfect. You hear me when folks join the church or they're baptized don't set your eyes on me. Try as hard as I do. Sometimes I may fail you. We're going to try not to, but we know that time, there are times we're going to fail one another. But set your eyes on Jesus Christ. Be an example so that they may know that you and I are true believers, not just true, true knowers of who Jesus is. There is a tremendous difference. And he says, I want you to, to live your life in such a manner in the Word of God. In the truth, in other words. Word is truth. And in conversation, when you are talking to people, may they just simply know that you're a pastor. I walked into one of the hospitals this week and the security guard, he recognized me and I recognized him. I've gone by his station a number of times throughout the years. And he simply said, I got you. Go on. May our conversations and who we are, may it reflect 
Jesus Christ in love or in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity of trying to be the very best person, child of God that any of us could ever be. Look at verse 13. This is where the title came from in our message. Till I come. Now I know Paul was saying, I want you to teach and preach till, I, till, till he would come back. And Paul's desire was to come back to every church. He, in some, he got that privilege. Others, he didn't. You and I in 2022, you and I need to be faithful till Jesus comes back. How long are we going to teach and preach the gospel? How long are we going to uh, try to serve our Heavenly Father? Till He calls you or I home or until He returns. This is what one of the songs we were singing about is reflecting. So we're to be about God's business. <clears throat> And God's business is much more important than about the businesses of this world. Now, the world's going to want to tell you that the world's, what the world's timetable is, that's most important. Listen, be, be, be very cautious. For what God's Word is saying is absolute truth. What the world is saying, it can be true, but it may be half-truths. In fact, we are being deceived in many ways of what really is important in our lives. The older you get, I think you realize that we're closer to, to meeting Jesus face to face, and we begin to come to that, that reality of what I used to think. And I used to put so much significance on. It's not near as important as what the world portrayed to me and taught me. I need to proclaim Jesus in every facet of my life, and so do, do every one of us. I need to keep telling the story of Jesus Christ. I need to keep living out the words that Christ has spoken to us. And that's really what Paul was saying to young Timothy and to his other, the other followers and to the church. He was saying, Live your lives for Christ. Till I come, you live your life for Christ. And he said, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. These are the things that are going to carry us not only through this life, but will carry us into eternity. Because if you and I put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and be assured that we will not and cannot be saved except through Jesus Christ. He is the only way. He is the only way that you and I can ever truly find forgiveness of our sins. Jesus Christ. He reminded as he walked this earth, those followers of his and those new believers that had heard him from a boat, as he proclaimed God's word, or in the synagogues or temples, or on a hillside. Jesus Christ would proclaim his heavenly Father's will, and how he fit in, and why he was sent. Let's go a little bit further in verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. See, this is what one of my greatest fear is in the world and age that we're living in that there are so many that are neglecting the gifts that God has given to us. We're shortchanging ourselves. We're shortchanging our communities. We're shortchanging our families. We're shortchanging what God has placed within us. And God said, it is important. It's important enough that I place that talent and ability in your life or in my life. Use it. And I'm afraid that so many times our society or whatever is saying that it's okay. I will receive, be a recipient of the word, but carrying it out or teaching it or taking it other places. Well, I know I should, but are we? How far are we willing to go with God? How far are we willing to step and to live 
our lives in the way and manner in which that Jesus Christ has commanded us to do so. The words that Paul wrote being, being inspired by the Holy Spirit till I come. Yes, you could interpret that till, till, it come, till Paul would come back there uh, to, the, to, the, to that body of believers. But, re, but let me tell you something, that Christ told us the very same thing. You work till I come back. Don't, don't, be, don't be caught like the, those that were seeing Jesus ascend back to be with the Father. And they were standing there looking up. Jesus said, what are you doing? Get busy. I've given you my word. I've given you my command. I've given you a part of me, and that's the Holy Spirit, which is going to be coming. I want you to be sure that you attend to, to what I've taught you and what the Holy Spirit is going to continue to teach you. I want to attend to what God's Word tells me that Leon ought to do. And, I, and you can put your name or your family's name right there too. I know that each of you here, you want to attend and you want to serve God to the best of your ability. How are you going to do it? Utilize every talent and ability that God has blessed you with for His glory. Not for our own. <clears throat> oh, there's a big temptation. And there's a lot of times in this world, the world wants to proclaim and pat, a, pat individuals on the back. But listen, if anybody needs to be lifted up, it's got to be Jesus. He's got to increase in every one of our lives, not us. I need to be the one that, that simply, I'm, I'm obeying God and each of us are obeying the Lord. We're doing what He's called to do. And, and that does not minimize or trivialize who we are. But it simply shows a lost and dying world that I care about Jesus Christ much, much more. And I know that in my life, I need to take serious the call that God's placed upon me. Look with me a little further here. And he says here, Meditate upon, in verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. In other words, throw yourself into it. Step into what God's, uh, God's position of where He wants our lives to be. What path? Utilizing who we are, each one being certainly indeed defined by God Himself, but uniquely created in his own in God's own image, but yet we're different with different abilities, different ways of expressing oneself. So important, folks, that we realize that this is who God wants us to be, to be that person. I want you to look now. Look at verse sixteen. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Take heed. Do not brush it off. Brush God's Word aside. Or to lay it aside. Be careful how we handle God's Word. Not just from the pulpit. But be careful how you're handling God's Word in your life. Not just on Sunday or Wednesday. But be careful when, how you're handling God's Word. Continually and steadfastly. Letting him lead and direct. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself, and look at the last phrase, and them that hear thee also hear. Let me, now, let me invite you to turn, if you've got your Bible, to uh, uh, Romans, the 12th chapter. I'm going to read out of King James here uh, for just a few moments. We're not going to get very far in this today. And this is just going to further support what we've been talking about here for a few minutes. Now, look with me at Romans, the 12th chapter. We're going to begin reading with verse 1, if you have your scriptures there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. It's that I I'm, I'm, have brought my whole self to God, and I've said, Lord, whatever your will is for my life, that's what I want. I want you to do what with me as you see fit. So Lord, I present to you, myself, my life. I give it to you all the days of my life that I shall serve you to the very best of my ability and I shall utilize all the 
things that you have given to me by way of the talents and abilities or whatever that you have given to me that, that you have privileged me to earn or to, uh, uh, to accumulate that it may be a blessing to other people. I'm so thankful that, that this church that I'm privileged to be a part of for so many years, that we believe in giving. We believe in missions. I was helping someone with uh, uh, a blanket or, and some food and things back in the Welcome Center earlier today. And one of the things that was said, all you've got to do at Austin Grove is, say, is mention it. And it'll be here. As they looked, and we saw so much already as we were beginning the day, already that had, that had come forth. You see, that's really what Paul was writing earlier as we were looking to young Timothy. But here we see in Romans telling us, here we are, that we're completely and totally in, in regard to Jesus Christ in our life as Lord of our lives. And we are that living sacrifice. Now, we are not made holy by oneself. We're made holy because we are saved and that Christ lives within us. That we may be, our lives may be acceptable unto God. Look at that middle part of verse 1. Which is, and I want you to notice that next phrase, this is a reasonable service. God is not asking something of any of us that is unreasonable. We serve a Lord that knows who we are and He knows also what we can do and He also knows what, what we cannot do. I am grateful that I serve a Lord that is there guiding me and guiding you. We must listen to Him. Be responsive to Him. Look with me as we continue reading a little bit in verse uh, 2. Be not conformed to the world. You see, I'm afraid that the world is having way too much influence on us. I'm afraid we're letting the world dictate to us who we are instead of letting God's Word be the source of where we find out really, truly where we're at. You see, it's so important that we are uh, making ourselves that we're giving God ultimate control in our lives and we're, we're seeking to follow Him. Not follow what the world says. Not follow the things. As we read in verse 2, said, Be not conformed to this world. Big red flag. See, it's like the, the, the cones and blockades that were put on a lot of the roads that were, were flooded in North Carolina and South Carolina and and Florida, or the roads washed out, stop. See, our Heavenly Father, He's seeking to keep us safe. And there are many times God says, Don't go there. Don't let that world tell don't let the world tell you who you're going to be and what you're going to be about, who you're going to serve, and to what what degree and, and whatever. Don't let the world be that determining factor. Let God be the determining factor in your life. Let God be supreme in your life. Let Christ be at the very head of your, of your family. Uh, we'd be so much better off as a society, but also as individuals, if we would take serious what's being written to us in God's Word here, being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Be not conformed to this world, but, let, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good. And what is acceptable. And what is the perfect will of God. Let God help us to show us what is right. And what is, 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 uh, uh, should be deserving our allegiance. And the direction of your life and my life. I need Christ. I need Christ there in my life. Don't be conformed to the world. Let the... The Holy Spirit transform you by renewing your mind and your heart and your soul so that you're going to be able to discern that which is good, that which is not good, but also that which is acceptable in God's eyes 
and also that which be able to discern that which is not acceptable in God's eyes. And folks, you know as well as I do, there is a whole lot that is happening in this old world and in our society today that is unacceptable to God's word and in, to God. That's why the scripture here reminds us, and it's more pertinent today, and it ought to be more alive today in every heart and every soul, because the world is selling to us and saying to us things that are so adverse to what God's word says. So let us see by way of the Holy Spirit, that which is good, that which is acceptable, but also that perfection. We all want to strive to that perfection. We're not going to be that way until we get to heaven. That perfection. But that doesn't mean that you and I do not strive. And look at the last phrase here in verse 2. And that's the will of God. Let's stop right there. Let me just stop right there for just a, for uh, here today, if I may. We'll pick up here a little bit later on here. Uh, but I want you to think about what we've been talking about here today till he comes. I know not the hour or time when Jesus is going to return. Neither do any of us. No one on TV, no one on the Internet, no denomination, no one knows, but I do know that what Jesus Christ said, that you and I, we're to, we're to be ready. And how are we going to be ready? We're going to be ready, first and foremost, by knowing Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. But what are we to do other than once you receive Jesus Christ? That's not enough. We must continue to be a witness in the name of Jesus Christ. These shoeboxes this morning, this is a witness that is going to certainly go beyond our means and ability to be able to reach people in some of the remotest areas of the world today. These shoeboxes are going to do that very thing till Jesus comes. I'm convinced there are going to be some boys and girls and there are going to be some parents and grandparents that are going to be in, G uh, they're going to be in heaven with uh, uh, because a child of theirs or a grandchild or a great-grandchild of theirs got a box. See, Jesus Christ opened the door so Jesus could be proclaimed and talked about and taught to them. Till he comes. In our lives today, 2022, getting ready to close out. Will 2023 come? Only God knows. But I do know that I need to be about God's business. I do know that Austin Grove Baptist Church needs to be about God's business. Nothing more, nothing less. He's Lord of all, and we don't have to fear because when the storms come, it'll be all right because even through it, God will give us the strength to go through it. Even in all this, and we don't have, we have a difficult time understanding the loss of life in, in every case. But we've got to trust God. That's why it's imperative, folks. It's not just an option. It's imperative that you and I use what God has given to us for His glory. Use what God has given to you and I. How long do we use it? Till He comes. Till He comes for us or until he comes for all of mankind and womankind. We're to be about God's business. That's not an option. That's what the church is. You take missions or reaching people out of the church. What do we have? We have a social organization. I don't know about you. I want to be God's. I want to be in God's will. I want to be directed and guided by the Holy Spirit. I want to do what God tells me that we ought to do. I want us as individuals to, to serve the Lord, not just at certain times and moments in our lives, but I want to do it till that day in which that God calls us home individually to heaven or whether it may be that time in which Jesus comes. I want to serve Him. How about it, folks? 
Are you here today? Are you utilizing what God has given to you in your life? Or is He getting the glory and honor that He and He alone deserves? If He's not, God is saying to you, I still love you. I'm here for you. And I know that maybe you... Maybe there are times you could have done a whole lot better and I could have done a whole lot better. Yes, it stomps all over my toes before I'm able to deliver a message like this. But listen, God's there. He's here for us. And He says, I'll forgive you and I want you to have a fresh start and a new beginning. How does that happen? It happens when you say yes to God. And you say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to serve you. Completely and totally, I give you my life. And wherever, whatever paths and people that you bring across my, my life, I want to be prepared and I want to be ready and I want to be willing to proclaim Jesus Christ to every man, woman, and child that I can till Jesus comes. And I know every person here in this sanctuary. I know you do. I've known you long enough. And I know you want to do that. But I want us to be more conscious of that. More, may, I, want, I pray that this message has, has made us more aware of, of what God expects of us and what God desires from each of us. And there's a difference in all of us. None greater than the other. We're, God loves you just as much as he loves me and, and others. He loves us all the same. He cares. And it's with a love that is indescribable. But he wants you and I to serve him. We choose today what we're going to do. Are you here today? Do you need to rededicate or recommit your life? There's room on these front pews if you can't bow down. For you to sit and just talk to the Lord. This altar is open. We'll make room for you to come. I'll be here to talk to you if you need to come. Whatever it is, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're not sure, please be sure that you know Christ. Be sure that you've given your heart completely and totally to Him. Be sure that you're all in for Christ. If not, let's talk and let's pray here today. Because, listen, that's the biggest decision and the most important decision I or anyone else will ever make is in, in accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Let's stand together and sing a hymn of invitation. Will you come just as you are? not going to sing you more bow your heads for just a moment if you would play just for a few more moments there's still time for you to make that decision to receive Jesus Christ to rededicate or recommit your life to resolve within your own self that as for me I am going to serve Christ in a deeper sense than I've ever done so before and I stand ready to do that Lord here this day Bow with me if you would please. Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this day. The blessings you have granted to us, the privilege we have had to come into your house this day. The message in song, the messages that have been proclaimed through the giving of gifts to boys and girls around about this world of ours. But also Father, as we have read your word and allowed your Holy Spirit to apply your word to, to each of our lives. Lord, I pray that we're walking as close as we can to you. And that we're going to be the church that you'd have us to be. 
And now, Father, as we go our separate ways, Lord, may you take care of us. Put that hedge of protection around us. Bring us back to the next appointed time here in this, your house. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful remainder of the day and a great week. If we can help you in any way, please do not hesitate to call upon us. May God bless. Welcome those that visit.